My name is Rob Stoke, I'm the director of Jess, and I'm here to introduce three of my colleagues who have taken a very real challenge this, this term. Yeah. Basically the start of the story goes back to last May I've been in education now for nearly 40 years, and um, there's times I get really annoyed about the things I didn't know as a young teacher. And I read an article where two sentences really inspired me. And we've heard a lot today about inspiration and how, how important it is, but very little is ever talked about how you inspire. And there's a big leap between using the word in a forum like this and getting into the classroom and actually being able to inspire young people. And that's what this team have managed to do. Basically the premise was, instead of having a science corner in a classroom, have a scientist's corner. Instead of giving the children a question, let them discover their own questions. So it turns it round. So that the students are actually required to think and act scientifically. So the learning, the interest, the curiosity comes from them rather than teachers. Now, uh, lovely, I got to stand in front of 200 of my colleagues and said, I'm really annoyed, I'm really frustrated. Throughout all of my teaching career, I would have loved to have done this. Over to you. An inspirational challenge, maybe. Um, but these three ladies, and more within the school, have picked this, up idea, this idea up and made it really work. So I'm really proud of them. They're really proud of their students. And the questions we've had back from the students, and the question raising <coughs> the scientific thinking we've had from the students has been absolutely ex exceptional. And that's the simple story they're bringing to you today. It has not been expensive to do. It has taken thought, it has taken energy, and like everything that happens in your classroom, it takes perspiration. So if you take the idea on, good luck, enjoy it, and enjoy the presentation this morning. Over Thank you, Ron. Hi, um, we work at Jumeirah English Speaking School. My name's Francesca Consiglio, and I'm a teacher in Foundation One. I'm also a teacher in Foundation One, and my name is Sean Donovan. I'm Janet Skelton, and I work in Foundation Two. Jumeirah English Speaking School is um, a dedicated primary school with 88 students per year group starting from Foundation 1 up to, to Year 6. In our foundation stage we have four classes of 22 students each um, in Foundation 1 and the same in Foundation 2. In each classroom we have a teacher and a teaching assistant but we also have a floating teacher's assistant across the foundation stage. Today we're going to be talking to you about how we equip um, our foundation stage children to become real scientists. In the English system, we teach from the early years foundation stage document. The children's learning is split into seven areas and science falls under the knowledge and understanding of the world area. Across the uh, areas of learning, we're taught the characteristics of effective learning. And I think these are important and worth looking at, that the children learn through playing and exploring, that they learn actively, and that they uh, end up being creative and critical thinkers. And I think that's something that isn't just applicable to science, but is very, very important to science. What do we want the children to learn? Well, we want them, children learn through using their senses, so we want them to recognise this and, and provide the opportunity to do just that, learn through their senses, through using all their senses. We want them to predict, um, to problem solve, another really key thing to ch uh, young children's learning, solving problems for themselves and working them out. Measuring, to manipulate materials. Children love to play with things and, and squeeze things in their hands and manipulate things. And um, through observation and recording. Obviously, young children can't write down things that they have learned and can, can't record by, by writing things, but they can mark make. They're still at that stage. So they can draw pictures. Uh, making sense of the world around them and by questioning. We, we need to model how to ask questions and then encourage them to do just that, ask questions. Um, this is our approach to teaching science. Um, we engage the student in, ac in activities that we do, so making it fun and interesting so that they want to be involved is really important. 
Um, we encourage the children to think about the activities that they're involved in. So we might use questioning and things like that for them to think about what they're doing. We get them to reflect on what they've found out. Um, we also recognise the importance of the prior knowledge and their alternate conceptions that they bring to each learning experience. Um, we also listen to the um, children's thinking and we regularly engage them in their conversation during their activities and about their ideas. How do we do this? How do we do all the things that Francesca's just, just described? Well, the key thing with young children is play. The children learn through play and we need to provide the, the, the things for them to, to do just that, to learn through play. Teacher-led activities. Um, we sometimes need to lead, well, a lot of the time, we need to lead the way for them. And a lot of the time, the children need to choose activities themselves, to child-initiated activities, to investigate and to learn themselves through doing. Um, and at, at Jess we have theme days and visits, we have theme days like the picture at the bottom is a water day where the children are having so much fun, there's all different activities, water activities set out for them in the playground and they just go along and experiment with all the different activities. And the top picture is a visit from Posh Paws um, and they've come into the school with the animals and the children can see the animals, touch the animals, and ask questions. Um, recognising and using their senses. The children learn to recognise through using their senses. Um, and again, there's lots of examples here of how we do that, how we encourage the children to do just that. In the first picture, the children are actually having a fantastic time, and so did we. They're playing with jelly. You don't often get the chance to put your hands in food and just experiment and play with it. And they're doing just that. They're squeezing it through their fingers, seeing how it feels, and talking about how it feels and how it makes them feel. And they're able to smell it as well. They can smell the different flavours. And the second picture here, we were talking about bears and, and, and habitats of bears and their different environments, so polar bears. So we've had the children walking through ice, trays of ice, and they can feel the cold, and through mud to feel the, the bear maybe walking through a muddy riverbank, and also through bark so they can see what it's like walking through the forest. Again, the, they're, they're, they're feeling it through their feet. Here they're playing with shaving foam and paint, getting really messy, which is what they love to do. And they've got some seed pods on the light box. The light box makes it a little bit more interesting and really more exciting for them to, to look at the different pods. And here is a mirror box. Again, they can look at the reflection of the light and it's a really nice way for the children to experiment and to discover. And in the last picture, they're smelling different different scents on, on, their, on the, the census table, so they're smelling cinnamon and things. Really exciting things going on. Okay, you want the children to learn to predict. We set the scene by reading a story about smells that helped a shoemaker. This is a traditional tale in England. And then the teachers looked at different, uh, the children looked at different sorts of shoes, and the teacher posed them a problem. Her shoes had little holes in their toes. What would happen when she went to the England where it was cold and wet? How could the children keep the teacher's toes dry? They were given a variety of materials, some yoghurt pots and some water, and asked <coughs> to find out the best material. Nothing more. That was it. In the first picture, you can see a little girl. Her name's Kira. She's just looking. She's just poured some material some water on top of some pink material. She chose it because she thought pink was pretty. And she's just looking at it and she looks puzzled, doesn't she? How is this going to tell her anything? You see next to her, she's got some laminated toes. Those are my toes that she's got to keep dry. She's not really solved a problem, but by putting it in the following picture, she's putting the toes into the yoghurt pot. She's covering the yoghurt pot with the fabric and then she's pouring the, fab the water on top of the fabric. Look at the delight in her face. She did that by herself. She solved that problem. She learned to solve a problem. 
the children predicted that furry fabric would keep my toes warm and dry. And they were quite shocked to find <coughs> the water had come through the fabric. Some fabrics had little holes in. They worked out that the water would go through that. And they also thought, interesting, the washing up cloth, the spongy washing up cloth, because that mops the water, that will be very good for keeping toes dry. Some children needed to have the experiment modelled, but a lot of them solved their own problems. In this next video, you're going to see children predicting. Um, and it's a really good video where the children are... Um, seeing the difference between a liquid and a solid and we've given the children some coloured water and we've said what, what, how can we make this hard, what can we do to change this and we decided that a, it would be a good idea to put the water into the freezer and see what happens which is exactly what we did and it did obviously form a solid. Children used the language liquid and solid and, um, and then we took the the ice outside and put it into some water that we had outside and watched to see what would happen next and in this video you can see exactly what the children discovered when they put the the water the ice into the water there were two colors that we used as well we used blue and yellow so they could see when when the ice melted what happened So they're pouring it in, in a minute, they're just a bit reluctant to start with. But then when they do finally put the ice in, you can see. <coughs> they observe the fact the ice is melting and they can see in a minute they melt. <coughs> and change, the colour will change. The sound's not really that good, but they do observe the fact that they have actually made green, the colour green. So they've learnt two things there. <coughs> Is there a way to stand up? So eventually they've, they've discovered that they've made the liquid into a solid and then consequently back into a liquid again. It's a very simple activity but very, very effective. children talking constantly about what's happening that it's cold and it's melting hear them now chatting away amongst themselves. And now we've got the buzz in the background. <laughs> Learning to measure. Um, in the early years foundation stage document, um, measure falls under maths. But measuring is also a very important aspect um, in investigation relating to science. Um, here the children are using hands-on investigative approaches. In the first picture, um, we've got a tray full of um, bath jelly. And the children are using this with different cylinders and different measuring cups. Um, in the first picture, this child's putting her hands in 
and pressing it down into the cylinder to watch what the liquid or the bath jelly is actually doing and observing what's going on. In the second picture, if a child puts an object in a cup and the cup has a hole in it, they're watching what happens when they submerge that object into the water with the hole and they're noticing that the water will come out. In the third picture, the children are investigating capacity using a variety of different containers of different sizes and everything. We've put food colouring in the water to make it a bit more interesting for the children. Um, these pictures demonstrate the children using a hands-on investigative approach, which is really important in science. Okay, making observations. We want the children to ask the questions and say what they see. And that is actually a skill. Here the children were given a ball made out of corn flour and water. If you mix corn flour and water together, have you all done it? Do you know what happens? Then you get a little ball and when you put the ball under pressure, it acts as a solid. You release the pressure and it's a liquid. It's called a non-Newtonian fluid. And we were given, gave the child a ball, and Holly says, her ball's melting. She's observed the change from the solid that she was handed to the liquid, and she's used her prior knowledge that when things were solid and to a liquid, they melt. How clever of Holly. And then Miles, I gave him a ball, too. I said, well, you're not in the sun. You have it. See what happens. <gasps> Well, his ball's melting because his hands are hot. Now, how clever of these children. They are using their prior knowledge to form, uh, up to have observations to give me explanations of what's happening. Now, the other thing that I want to tell you is, Miles I did another experiment with him only last week. Now, this was done 10 weeks ago. This, these pictures were taken 10 weeks ago. <gasps> Mrs. Skelton, do you remember when you gave me the ball of the yellow stuff and it melted? So there is a four-year-old child remembering something. Because it was fun, it's impacted on him and it's made an, an issue for him. It's become an issue for him and he's remembered it. And that's quite a big thing in, in the young, uh, young child's life, that they can, you know, that's quite a long time ago that he did it, wasn't it? So that's quite phenomenal that he could remember it and relate to it. Here's another example of making observations. Here, this is the first picture here. The, the children have observed the fact that before they washed the socks and immersed them into the water, they were light and dry put them in the water, the socks suddenly became heavy. And they said that, these socks are heavy. And then we said, well, I said to them, well, what, what can we do? What can we do to make them light again? What can we do to help that happen? And they came up with the idea, let's dry them. So they're putting them onto the drying rack. In the second picture, the children are making some fantastic discoveries here where they're colour mixing. So they've got the primary colours in front of them and then with food colour and then mixing them into a, a clean container and seeing what happens, what happens when they mix two primary colours together. And that they were just delighted when they found out that they could they could change the colour, make other colours. Scientists have to record what's happening. Beginning to record is very important skills to learn, even to the young age. These children are only at the emergent stage of writing and their mark making might not make sense to somebody else. They could record with digital cameras and iPads, but they're not always available. And sometimes it's not practical. If you've got a lot of water around, you don't really want a four-year-old or three-year-old child with a camera. So here we've used very simple photocopied templates and the children have used them and made sense of what they've been doing. In the first picture, the children have got red cabbage juice and the red cabbage juice has changed colour with the application of either an alkali in the top picture to green or an acid in the bottom picture to red. Here, I'll show you this experiment later in our science role play. The children have put blobs of food colouring on top of milk, add a detergent and watch the recorded the effects. And it's really, although pictorial, quite powerful message. Okay, I need the sound now. Activity where we're using glue and borax to make um, a 
a polymer called, which I call flubber, and the children enjoy making. I want you to listen, if we ever get the sound, to the children's language. They're using terms such as dissolve, solid, liquid. But these are four-year-old children and they can use scientific terms and scientific language. There's no need to use made-up words for them. It just creates misconceptions later. The children are also doing it themselves. Although I'm there and guiding the experiment, they're doing it. what happens next it's fantastic foundation stage we use a lot of investigation areas in our classroom as well as in our central areas and these areas are set up um, for the children to access freely on a daily basis and it's for them to go this is child initiated learning so they can go on their own choose cho um, access any of the areas and it's um, we can use questioning to enhance their experiences at these, these investigation areas, but we do let them do a lot of independent work on their own as well. For instance, in the first picture, we've got the children investigating magnetism. So we've got some trays set up where they've got the magnetic wands 
and they've got a variety of materials on the tray that they can investigate, see what's magnetic and what's not. Um, in the second picture we've got a tray with all natural materials in it so that the children can come up, use the magnifying glasses, tweezers, things like that and have a look at all the natural materials from, from the local environment. Um, in the third picture, we've got the light box set up and the children um, are using different shapes on it to investigate the shapes. That we can use all sorts of objects on there to enhance their experiences and make it interesting. Um, in the fourth picture, that's um, a light box where it's all mirrors around the edges um, and the children can investigate using the, the magnifying glasses and um, also different lens glasses as well to investigate the light sources that we've got in, in that spot. Um, in the final one, this is a science role play area set up for the children to come and access like a little science lab and the children are working with bicarbonate soda, vinegar and water and when they mix the three they're having a look at what happens so they, they can come up, access all these areas on their own um, and often with the other children coming and joining in, there's a lot of social interaction and lots of discussion which then enhances the learning experiences. Okay, so we've shown you teacher-led activities. Now this is an example of our science role play um, where the children are working independently. Now, they're not just playing with science. If you look at the little boy, his name's Thomas, and at the end, he's saying, I, I am obviously there because I'm videoing it, and that's different in that they are interacting with me, but I'm not leading the play, and they've done this before. And you can tell, because <coughs> Thomas at the end, I ask Ayana is, if she puts more detergent on, will she get more effect? And he says, no, she won't, because she's done it. And once it's happened, it won't happen again. He doesn't understand about the surface tension and the fat globules on the surface of the milk that are disrupted with the detergent. But he understands that because he's done it before, and he's, this is him revisiting, he understands that once you've done it, it won't happen again. enjoyed that, didn't he? <laughs> that the children have accessibility to the materials. Um, so in this first picture, the children are playing with Play-Doh and they can choose what tools and equipment that they'd like to use when they're um, interacting with the Play-Doh. This encourages self-direction and self-learning. If children can choose how they want to create their own learning by using um, the materials that they, they have chosen. 
Um, in the second picture, um, the children are using everyday materials to investigate floating and sinking. So they've got a balloon, a yogurt pot, sponges, there's shells, there's um, corks, everyday materials. And it's important for children to use everyday materials in different ways so they can experiment with it, <laughs> see how things work. Um, it also it encourages perspective taking and creative thinking as well. And the teacher's role. What is our role in their learning? Um, questioning, obviously. We need to teach, the children need to be taught to ask questions. So we need to ask open-ended questions and why, what, when, where. Um, it's never too early to use technical language. As Janet mentioned earlier, it's really good to use that language from an early age so that it stops any misconceptions in later life. Um, and of course, provides in the appropriate equipment, which hopefully we do. And so they seem to really enjoy all the things we put out for them. And did you, do you want to say something? I, I want to say that it's also our job to guide the experiment. We know, I mean, go with the flow, but you know where the flow's going and you have yeah. to direct them sometimes, otherwise you'll just end up with a whole mass of food colouring in the middle and that's not what you're aiming to achieve. In order for them to get something out, you sometimes need to guide the experiments and that's up to you to know, you know your children and to know which children will need guidance and which children can experiment mm. in a more open-ended yeah, and some need a bit more than others, don't they? So, And as we've talked about throughout the whole time we've been here is the children need to learn through play, and that is making it fun. Make it as much fun as possible, and, and that's it really. So if you would like any of the recipes of any of the things that we've done in the videos like the flubber or the play-doh anything um, or if you'd like to ask any questions that maybe we don't answer you today there's um, a clipboard here with some paper on and just put your name and your school name and your email down and we'll get back to you with recipes or anything that you'd like so thank you very much for coming and listening We've really enjoyed it. Thank you. Okay, thank you.